In this video, we're going to be going over question four from the IB Math SL paper one uh, that was given in May 2015, time zone two. And it was a calculus question. Part A asks us to find a derivative. Part B asks us to find an antiderivative. There are tons of formulas in the formula booklet for derivatives and antiderivatives, so you should certainly consult it. Um, and the mistakes that get made on this question are so common. I'm actually going to show in red how not to do this question first. Uh, and then I'll show you in blue how to actually do it. So to get the derivative of g of x, the mistake that gets made is, let's say, bring up the x and write it next to the ln x with a power of negative 1, which is correct. That part is right. That is another way of writing the g of x function. The uh, mistake that gets made is then saying, okay, now I'm going to get g prime of x by simply getting the derivative of ln x. You can look in your formula booklet and see that it's 1 over x. Multiply it by the derivative of x to the negative 1, which is power rule. Bring down the negative 1, decrease the power by 1. Each one of those derivatives is separately correct, but the derivative of the g of x function, because it is a product, cannot be done this way. You cannot just get the derivative of each part of a product and call it a day. There is a product rule for finding derivatives of functions that have products in them. Uh, what you could have done had this been a plus sign is go term by term and get each derivative separately. That would have been fine. But because it's a product, this method does not work. Instead, we need to go back to square one and try using the product rule or the quotient rule. So in blue, I will show how I would do this question, which is that the original function is given as a quotient. I'm going to leave it as a quotient and use the quotient rule. I highly recommend you do it this way as well. Um, because the quotient rule is more simplified, and then you don't have to simplify it later. So let's use quotient rule, which says, if I was to write it out in shorthand, bottom times the top prime, which means the derivative of the top, minus the top times the bottom prime, which means the derivative of the denominator, all over the denominator squared. Okay, so let's try to employ that formula here to get g prime of x. We have the bottom times the derivative of the top. Okay, so that's x because the bottom function itself is x. And top prime, the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. Minus the top function unchanged multiplied by the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of x is 1 all over the bottom squared. This would be worth at least half of the points on this question. And then we just need to simplify this thing correctly. I actually think that up to there, that was worth three out of the four questions. And the final thing to do is to simplify this. x times 1 over x is just 1. ln x times 1 is just ln x. It's over x squared, and you can leave it at that. No better way to simplify that function. So that's the correct derivative. And then in part b, we're asked to find an antiderivative. So let's set, set up what that would look like first. Antiderivative or integral of ln x over x, and then there's a dx. Okay. Similarly, you cannot just get the antiderivative of the numerator and the denominator separately and call it a day. Um, we, have, we have to use u substitution here um, to figure out this antiderivative. So one thing I've recommended doing uh, repeatedly is first rewriting this antiderivative as ln x multiplied by 1 over x times dx. So pulling out the denominator and writing it as its, um, as its own factor next to the numerator. Now, if you investigate the two things there, you'll see that they are indeed equal. They're the same thing. It's just that the one on the left is written as a quotient, and the one on the right is written as a product. The reason I think this is helpful is because when you go ahead and try u substitution, you've got two choices. You should either let u equal ln x, or you should let u equal 1 over x. And it's not always immediately clear what you should let u equal. So you, should, you could try a few things. The process by which the trying works is to say, all right, let's try making u equal ln x, in which case I know I'm supposed to find du dx, which is the derivative of that thing that you just let u equal. And we know the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. And then I look back to my integral, 
and I see if there is a 1 over x in there that I want to replace, and indeed there is. So I have found the perfect u because it's du dx is there for me to replace. And then I need to pass the dx to the other side. So du equals 1 over x dx. And I see that that is the other terms that I need to replace, the other factors that I need to replace, I should say. So now I can rewrite this as the integral of u times du. u was ln x, du was 1 over x times dx, so I've just substituted in place of each of those the u terms that I have. And now I actually have to anti-derivative this thing, anti-differentiate it. So the anti-derivative of u is where we follow the rule of increase the power by 1 and put it over the new power. And then there has to be a plus c when we do an uh, indefinite integral. And then I just have to replace u back with ln x, because that's what I said u was. And that is worth all of the points in this question. And indeed, they were generous here and said if they forgot the plus c, you could still give them the full credit if they're able to do the u substitution correctly and then remember to integrate it. And that is all.